Alexa, stop. Okay, we gotta get up. You wanna know why? Cause today's the big day. We're finally getting the gorf. Okay, so I'm doing my normal routine. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm gonna take a shower really quick. And dude, my hair's looking totally crazy. I need to get a haircut, man. Big time. Okay, so if you don't remember, we went to Tucson to go visit David uh, for Arcade Pickers episode two. And if you don't remember, I was hooked on this one Gorf cabinet here. Check it out real quick. Gorf cabaret, like what the hell? Like this is a thing? This is a thing. What does something like this it go for? Well. This one right here, probably about 900. Okay. All right, but they, I mean, they, did they make a lot of these? Cause I've never seen it in this form factor. I haven't seen many of them. So as much as I like the Gorf cabinet, I don't want to pay $900 for it. So I called up David and I'm like, dude, would you be willing to trade some stuff? And I told him, I was like, hey, I have this Sega Thunderblade. I'm not really finished with the restoration, but maybe we can work a deal on that. And so we did. So, you know, there's going to be some cash involved, but also a trade. So I'm pretty stoked because the Thunderblade, I'm not that excited about, but the Gorf, I'm really excited about. So we're going to load this thing up and then head down to David in Tucson and get the Gorf. Okay, so we're only 20 minutes into our drive. We're in downtown Phoenix, and yeah, it's already got a ton of traffic, but it is a holiday weekend, but I'm thinking it's going to clear up. We're going to be fine. Plus, I have the day off. It's time to relax and just chill. So here's the... Uh, Here's Picacho Peak. I always want to call it Pikachu or Pocahontas Peak, but it's Picacho Peak. It's really pretty. You can see it when you're on the I-10 heading toward Tucson. But anyways, we're almost there. We probably got another like 45 minutes to an hour, but things have cleared up. So I'm looking forward to seeing David and picking up the Gorf. We're here. Come on, Gorf. All right, so we made our two hour plus journey and we are here in Tucson safely at David's place. He's not here yet. He's actually doing me a favor and he's meeting me in between work to do this today. So I'm super appreciative of that. But I'm also super stoked because this is a Gorf Cabaret. It's a rare cabinet I'm picking up. You don't see many of these. And I'm just telling you guys, I can't be more excited. And it's kind of one of those like holy grail cabinets for me personally. So I had to get it. And, you know, I'm just lucky that David worked out a pretty good deal with me. So anyways, I'm sitting here waiting for David. He'll be here shortly. I'm not going to film inside or anything, but it is definitely hot. It is one of those hot Arizona days. It's almost 100 or over 100. And man, I'm it, I'm hot, but I'm looking forward to meeting with David, hanging out with him for a little bit. Then we'll bring the Gorf home and we'll check it out. All right, guys, the Eagle has landed and the Gorf is finally home. So that's really good. We got it here in one piece, which is awesome. It made the trek from Tucson without any issues. So here it is. Now this cabinet came in three variants. It came in a cocktail cabinet, a standard full size, and what you see here, which is the mini slash sort of cabaret cabinet. It's often referred to as a cabaret, also referred to as a mini. So there you go. So you may see it online as both. Now it's really in good shape. The 13 inch CRT is bright and tight, so that's good. The marquee, however, has a little bit of weird damage to the top, like someone intentionally burnt it. Now this is a very rare, very unique looking marquee. So it actually has like a U shape and it kind of connects like that. So I'm gonna see if I can get Joe Sabo, my buddy, to see if he can fabricate something because it seems like it's hard to find these. I already did some searching and I couldn't. Now aesthetic wise, there's a couple things that sort of need to be fixed on the cabinet. There's some paint splashes on both the sides where I'm not sure maybe someone was restoring another cabinet and this was collateral damage, I guess. Poor, poor Gorf. But we'll fix that if we need to. I'm gonna see if I can strip some of the paint off of it. If I can't, then we'll do restorations on the front panel and the side panels. The control stick works great. So the game actually plays and everything works awesome. So what we'll do is I'll bring the camera in, we'll do a little bit of gameplay and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, here we go. So it looks like the monitor needs to be degaussed a little bit, but that's not a big deal. That's something I can easily do with a degaussing coil. Actually, we could do that really quick. There's like a string of purple going up the front. I think we should be able to fix that pretty easily. Okay, let's do that really quick. Dial, space, 
We didn't get all of it, but it looks pretty good. So we'll, we'll leave it like that for now. All right, here we go. So <laughs> one thing that's kind of interesting is this cabaret I looked inside still has the original power supply. Those fail pretty quickly on these things as they age, but there's a, um, there's a replacement. I think Mike's Arcade and a couple other places sell it, so I'll probably be picking that up just because it's intimate that it will fail. I just don't really want to have it fail on me, so I'll probably just replace it and keep that other one just to have the original parts. Uh, if you guys remember from Arcade Pickers Episode 2, this is one of the first games to use the Votrex speech chip, too, so kind of creepy. <laughs> I don't know, in the 80s, the Votrex, that speech chip was like, I don't know, just creeped me out, man. And if you remember the voices in like Sinistar, it's just creepy. <laughs> you can have nightmares about that. Uh, it also taunts you when you die too. It says, ha ha ha, which you'll hear in a second if I die. Let's see. Why is he not going? Come on. There we go. All right, we're on mission three. We're doing okay. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Anyways, guys, we're going to do a deeper dive of gameplay and everything on this game at a future date, but I just wanted you guys to see that it works well. The flight stick is in good shape, and even the light on the flight stick still lights up, so that's pretty cool, as well as the marquee. All right, guys, that about wraps up this video. I would have loved to show more gameplay, but currently the Gorf is in my garage in garages right now in Arizona. It's starting to get above 100 degrees, so the garages are sitting at like 120, so it's really hot and uncomfortable to film in there. But when I do get it up into the house, I'll film more. I want to thank David. He hooked me up, man. That's an awesome deal on the Gorf Cabaret, and I really, really am going to enjoy this cabinet a lot. Big fan of the game, and the cabinet's just super cool and unique. But I want to know in the comment section, like, what is your cabinet that you must have? I probably have about 10 of them. I'm probably only about seven, I have about seven left that I have to have. But I want to know what cabinets you just have to have, right? Ones that are your, considered your holy grails. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. That's it for now, and we will see you on the next one.